Happy New Year, everybody! It's 2018, y'all. It's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new season. Anybody ready for Vision Night, which is happening tonight? Man, I need y'all to get a little more energy. Y'all stand to y'all's feet real quick. This is what we need to do. <clears throat> I, I have a sense that some of y'all are tired. Who's tired in here? Yikes, really? Man, it, all right. Who's got lots of energy? All right, so this is the deal. Tonight is vision night, which means I need you hyped. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going I'm to get you out of your comfort zone. Um, if there are any slots open that are in front of you and you're willing to fill those, would you, like, get as close as you can to the front? This is only for those that are super hyped. If you're tired, even get, even get, uh, even get closer. All right, it's vision night, vision night, vision night, vision night. All right, take your arms, stretch them out. Come on, what? there you go. There you go, wiggle your arms. All right, take your legs, wiggle them out a little bit. All right, y'all ready? Are y'all ready? All right, this is what I need y'all to do. I'm gonna count to three, and then when I count to three, I want you to make as much noise as you can for five seconds. All right? Are y'all ready? As much noise as you can for five seconds. One, two, three, five, four, three. I can't hear you. Two, one, yes! All right, all right, you may be seated. You may be seated. It's vision night. I'm super excited about tonight. As you can tell, that's why I'm yelling and screaming and all that fun stuff. I'm so excited about tonight. Here's why. Someone tell me what vision is. Just one person. Just yell out what vision is. Seeing. How you see the future. Who said that? Who said how you see the future? Was that, was that you, Katie? Oh, the future. Whew, that's good. All right. So tonight is about vision night. You know what vision night is? Vision is important because vision is seeing. It's the ability to see. What happens if you can't see? You're blind, which means that you're going to have a hard time knowing where to go. We're blessed. If you can see, you ought to wake up every morning and be like, thank you, God, that I have sight. If you've been around somebody that doesn't have vision, that doesn't have sight, it's a hard life to live because you don't know where you're going. And so tonight, students, it's all about vision. It's all about where we're going. It's all about 2018. And so as most of you guys knew, uh, know, I became student pastor and Young adults pastor, basically next-gen pastor a few months ago, a couple months ago. And, hey, thank you. Thank you, Steve. And I'm super stoked, super excited. And as most of you guys have probably heard me preach, I get super into the Word of God because I love this Christian life. And I love Jesus. And I love you guys. And I love how much energy you have. And I love how much promise you have in your life. So as I took on this new role, I began to pray. And I was like, God, where are you leading us as a ministry? Where, as, as the student pastor, what do you want me to say to the students? Where do you want us to go as a ministry? And I felt like God was like, I'm taking you guys in 2018 to the next level. I'm so excited about that. He's taking us to the next level. He's taking us to a new season. He's taking us deeper. And so as I started thinking about where we're going, I also reflected back at what happened last year. So I'm going to tell you about some stuff that went on last year, and this is going to be so exciting and so amazing because you're a big part of the success that happened last year. So last year for Salvations in Students in 2017, we had 48 students raise their hand and give their life to Christ. Oh, come on, you ought to make some noise about that. We had... 95, this is last year, we had, in, in 2017, we had 95 first-time guests. And that's because you went out there and you told somebody else, you brought somebody else to Wednesday night, so my hat's off to you, I'm proud of you, keep doing that. Then we also had one team members, we have an average of 46 students that are serving across High Ridge. What, give it up for yourself. That's amazing, that's amazing. 
And so tonight, if you have a piece of paper, if you have a pen, if you have your phone, don't be on Instagram unless you, you know, take some Insta stories and stuff like that. But I want you to jot down some stuff because this is, this is the direction that we're going on for this year. Anybody ready to go this year? Are y'all ready? Are y'all energized? Are y'all ready to go to the next level? All right. All right. Here we go. We're going to pray, and then we're going to read the scripture, and then we're going to get into it, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you, first of all, for this year that we had. We thank you, God, God, for all the people that raised their hand and made you Lord of their life. We thank you for all those that were baptized. We thank you for all the first-time guests. I thank you, Lord God, for all those that volunteer and serve here at High Ridge. And Lord, I thank you for each and every single student that's in this building tonight. Father, they wouldn't be here if they didn't love you. And so I pray, Lord God, that this will be the year that we understand you more and we get to know you better. And I believe that you're going to do awesome things here tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Amen. All right. Now, I'm very energetic. I get loud, and I need y'all to match me. Is that all right? Oh, I like that. I like that. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Ooh, man, amen. Get me started. Y'all want me to go a little uh, faster? Just keep saying amen. We'll be done in like 10 minutes. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know y'all are motivated by that. But All right, so if you have a Bible, Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. You can check it out on the screen. If you have your Bibles, you can open it there. If you have your phone, you can look at your Bible there. All right, verse number 1. It says, on one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, somebody say one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. This is Jesus, right? Verse number four, and when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great, a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both, they filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Sibidee. That's such a weird name. (laughs) Who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, for from now on you will be catching men. And when he had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed Jesus. When you have an amazing encounter with Jesus, you're willing to leave everything and follow him. I believe 2018 is the year where there's going to be a lot of folks you're willing to leave everything and follow after Jesus because you're going to have an encounter this year that's going to change the direction of your life. Y'all ready? All right. All right. So let's get into the word. Thank you, Chaz, so much. Y'all give it up for Chaz, man. Tickling the ivies, creating that atmosphere. Did y'all feel better while he was playing? You know what I'm saying? You're like, man, I'm feeling to get into worship, man. The worship team does such a phenomenal job. Y'all give it up for the worship team. A lot of time, effort, practice goes into that, and our hats go off to that. Bree, you're doing a phenomenal job. Y'all give it up for Bree in the building. All right, Synoptic Gospels. Anybody ever heard of that phrase, the Synoptic Gospels? The Synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, they're called the Synoptic Gospels because... Matthew, Mark, Luke wrote about Jesus. They told about his stories. They told about the miracles. They spent a lot of time just talking about Jesus and the miracles. And they're called the Synoptic Gospels because they're very similar. So how many have ever read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels? They're very similar. A lot of the stories are the same. Um, A lot of the wording is the same. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels because they're very similar. In fact, they, a lot of times they use some of the same wording. John, the book of John, is an outlier. It's different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke because John spends most of his time as a disciple talking about who Jesus is. 
more so than he does what Jesus did. Okay? So when you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you get kind of a, a, an interesting look into all the miracles that Jesus did. But John spends a lot more time talking about the man Jesus. Now, this story is a little different because Luke, who's in part of the Synoptic Gospels, is the only one that tells the story of Jesus picking his disciples differently than the other three. So all the, all the Gospels, except for in Luke, they say that Jesus was walking through the shore. He sees Peter and he says, hey, come follow me and I'll make you fishers men. Luke says there's a little more to the story. Luke says that a crowd was following Jesus. Obviously, Jesus had started his ministry after he got baptized. He started teaching people. And people were following Jesus and were like, man, he's such a great teacher. He's awesome. He's phenomenal. He's the, he is the it factory. He is the, the biggest thing going. Who's someone popular right now? He's the Justin Bieber. LeBron James. Anybody have Bieber fever? I actually like Justin Bieber. I think he's pretty cool. I'm sorry. Am I supposed to admit that at the age of 30? All right. I don't like Justin Bieber. Actually, I kind of do. But Jesus was popular at that time, and everybody wanted to get close to him because they were like, he's so cool. He knows how to teach the word. He's phenomenal, blah, blah, blah. And they, the Bible says that they were following him because they wanted to hear the word. And there was such a great crowd that was following Jesus that Jesus was like, man, I can't just keep talking to them. I got to get on a, on a platform. I got to get away from them so that they can hear me. And so he jumps into a boat. He sees two boats. There's this huge crowd following. He jumps into a boat. He sees two. He gets into one. He says, all right, um, I need a ride out here into the ocean. Or it was a lake. I need a ride into the lake. This would be the equivalent of who, who's got a car in here? How many have a car? That'd be the equivalent of you getting into my car right now and waiting for me to come out there. And when I come out there, you say, hey, what's up, Pastor Tim? I'm going to need you to give me a ride to Dallas. First of all, I'm going to be like, first of all, what are you doing in my car? How did you get in? You know what I'm saying? And then why are you asking me to take you to Dallas? I don't know you. And so... Jesus gets into the boat, and he looks at Simon. He's like, yo, I need to use your boat. And, G and Simon's like, really? Okay. And the, the weirder part, is that a word, weirder? The weirder part is that Simon's like, okay, I'll let you use my boat. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is Jesus wants to use your boat. You say, well, what's the significance of that? Well, Simon Peter, he was a fisherman. His livelihood, everything that was important to him was in that boat. His nets, the way he made his living, was in the boat. He spent most of his time in the boat. He made his money out of that boat. He fed his family out of the boat. He, the boat was important to him. And so here tonight, students, I want you to know the first thing that Jesus is going to ask you for, he's going to ask you for what's important to you. You know why? Because Jesus wants to use your boat. You may say, like, okay, what's, what's so significant about Simon? Why did Jesus decide to pick Simon over anybody else. Was Simon important? Was he cool? Was he just zealous about God? No, Simon had problems. He would cuss people out. He tried to cut off a dude's head and got his ear instead. Simon has some issues. Did Jesus need Simon? The answer is no. But you know what? He wanted Simon. Jesus doesn't need you, but he wants you. Need implies obligation. It means that I can't survive without it. Jesus can survive without us. But Jesus decides, you know what? I want you. Because want implies a desire. The first thing you've got to understand about Jesus is that Jesus wants you. And I'm, I'm fixing to enter into this, the second part, which is the main theme of this year. But before I get there, I want you to understand the importance that what would happen? I wonder what would happen in your life if you decide tonight, Jesus, you can have my boat. You can have everything. I mean, you can have my time, my energy, my efforts. You can have everything. So when I come to Wednesday night, I'm not just going to, you know why you're here? You're here because you love Jesus. You know what I'm saying? If you went through the trouble, how many of y'all combed your hair and brushed your teeth before you got here? Hopefully that'd be everybody, right? <laughs> you, like, yeah, you can be tired. That's all right. But as long as you brush your teeth and comb your hair, that's the only requirement we have. <laughs> but you made all, you took, yeah, oh, man, Steve, you can't comb your hair. I'm sorry, man. But as long, <laughs> you got ready to come here. So 
since you took the time to be here, you're already letting Jesus know, Jesus, you're important to me. So let this be the year where you say, Jesus, I'm all in. The second thing, this is the most important thing, if you're taking notes, is from verse number four. And when he had finished speaking, this is Jesus, he had gotten through speaking to the crowd. He said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. The second thing that I want to talk to you about is Jesus is calling us deeper. When I started thinking about where God is leading us, I think and I believe that there is a generation of students that is sick and tired of mediocre, shoreline, knee-deep Christianity. We're sick and tired of just having a bunch of fake friends. Come on. I'm tired of being around fake people. Look, there's a lot of people. I'm going to be honest with y'all. In 2018, I unfriended them on Facebook because I was getting tired of just seeing a bunch of fake things. I'm ready for authentic, real relationships. I'm ready for a real deep move of God. If you believe that, say amen. I'm telling you, I am sick and tired of coming and just going through the motions of church. I want to have a little more of Jesus. I want to experience Jesus in a new way. I want to have a real authentic relationship and walk with Jesus that people, when they see me, are going to be like, there's something different about him. And I feel like every single person here tonight, God is wanting you to go deeper in him because he wants you to make a difference where you're at. Write this down. The crowd hang out on the shores, but the disciples launch out into the deep. So the question tonight is, do you just want to be a part of the crowd, or are you ready to be a disciple? Are you ready to go deeper in Jesus? There's three areas that I feel like the Lord is leading us to go deeper in, and one is worship. God is calling us to have a genuine, deeper relationship with him in worship. That means, you know what, when they're up here and they put on all the time and energy to get ready to lead us into worship, we're all in. We're like, you know what, let's go. Jonathan, if you're going to lead us in worship, we're all in. We're ready to worship with you because we want to go deeper and worship with Jesus. The second thing, write this down, is the word. Jesus wants you to go deeper into his word. But here's the thing. Jesus is also the living word. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse number 14 says, The Word was made flesh. Jesus is the very expressed image. He is the very expression of the Word. So not only does Jesus want you to get deep into the Bible, but he wants you to get deep into the Word, into him, and understand him even more. And then the third thing is community. Jesus wants you to build a deeper community. Become deeper friends. Determine, you know what? I'm going to have greater relationships this year. I'm going to influence more people. You're here because you're a believer. And there's a lot of unbelievers in your schools. There's a lot of people that don't know Jesus. And the only way they're going to know Jesus is through you. Build that community. Be the one that creates that bridge between them and Jesus. So that you can be the example that they need to follow after Jesus. The third thing that I want to ask you. And this is where the rubber meets the road, students, is will you launch out into the deep? Will you make this year the year where you decide, I'm going deeper in Jesus? I want to know him more. I want to experience him better. I want to, I want to go as far as I can with Jesus because I am ready to see a difference in my life, in my school, on my campus, in my family, with my friends, in my own personal walk with God. How many of you are ready to go deeper in Jesus? I'm glad like 30% of y'all believe that. How many of you guys are ready to go deeper in Jesus? So you may be asking, okay, how are we going to do that? As a ministry team, it is our job to facilitate that deeper move. As a ministry team, you're going to find out that we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that we create a great environment for you to grow deeper in Jesus. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to do that with sermon series. The next sermon series, you just saw the video, is going to be Allegiance. This is going to be pretty awesome. And guess what? We've got a guest speaker that's going to kick us off. Somebody... Anybody, everybody, if you haven't heard this guy, you're missing out. Y'all, y'all, do y'all even know who he is? Sam Gamir. Y'all give it up for. He's going to start it off. 
We're going to have more guest speakers in. Then we're going to have an unplugged series. And we have a special guest speaker for that. Somebody know who it is? It's, it's, okay, it's a lady who is very hyped, who is really cool, who was uh, playing on this Kahoot game and was winning. Y'all give it up for Katie Bowling. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Then we're going to have a super series, and this is going to be kind of a serious one, and I want you to invite all of your friends to this one, because this is a big thing that we're dealing with right now, and that's 13 Reasons Why. How many have seen that series on Netflix? Yeah. 13 Series Why, is, it's a very serious one. It's a very serious series, and it's something that we, I think, all are, have at some point maybe dealt with or run into somebody that's dealt with that, and so we're going to be talking about it. We're going to get real. Is that all right? This is the year of getting real. We're going to get real about some stuff. All right? Then we're also going to have, y'all ready for this? A spring bash. Spring break party. How many of y'all like the party? I love the party. I love a cake. I love celebrations. I love them little horns that you blow. I love the little confetti. I love all of that. So we're going to have an awesome spring break party. Then we're going to have a humble series. That's going to be awesome. And we're talking to some people right now that are going to be involved in that. We're going to have a bleep series. Now, this is going to be a cool series because um, we're going to have some surprises in that series. We'll be looking forward to that one. Then we're going to have students by students. You get to hear your peers, which is going to be awesome. It's going to be phenomenal. We're also going to have another series called Dirty Laundry. Exactly. It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned for that. So many of you have been asking, okay, are we doing bots this year? All right, all right, right, right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So this is, I'm going to answer the question by telling you this. We are not. I thought y'all just going to be all sad. We're not doing bots. But what we're doing is we're replacing it with something bigger, better, and more awesome. Again, hey, what's the theme of this year? into the deep that means we're going to go to the next level so what we're doing is we're going to have a spring break bash that's happening on spring break time then we're going to have a student rally that's going to happen in may which is going to be phenomenal and then we have something that i can't tell you about yet but it's brewing it's awesome but you need to stay tuned for the deets and it's coming in the fall y'all give it up for something that you don't know about that's coming in the fall It's going to be awesome. But here's the thing. We want you to get involved in groups. Be connected to the groups that you're in. Be connected to those group leaders. Because I believe Jesus is going to take you deeper in his word, deeper in worship, and deeper in community. So what can you do? (laughs) This year, what can you do as a student? Somebody say invite. Invite, 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 invite. Invite other students to come here on Wednesday night to experience what you experience. Connect to us on social media. How many follow hybrid students right now? If you don't follow us on Instagram, go follow us on Instagram. Follow me. How many of y'all follow me on Instagram? If you don't follow me, follow me on Instagram. All right, before this night is over, it's simply TL Rivers on Instagram. Follow me. I'm always on my story. You're going to get to know. What's that? Awesome. Then follow me. So follow me on Instagram, and then share all of our stuff. We're constantly putting content. Share that all across, okay? This is going to be an awesome year. It's going to be a year of amazing things. Now, some of you may be wondering, okay, what if I don't really know Jesus that well? What if I don't, what if I don't even, haven't even given Jesus my boat? I want you to hear me real careful. Close your eyes. Bow your heads. If you're ready to go deeper in Jesus, you know him, but you're ready to go to that next level. No one's looking around. Just slip your hand real quick so I can see who you are. Awesome. There may be someone here that you didn't, you haven't given your life to Jesus yet. And all the stuff that I'm talking about doesn't even really make sense to you because you've never invited him into your heart. And if that's you, then I'm going to pray a quick prayer. And if you're ready to make that difference, if you're ready to make 2018 the year 
where you invite Jesus into your heart and you allow Jesus to be the Lord in your life, that you just pray this prayer with me. And I believe Jesus is going to make a difference in your life tonight. Prayer is simple. Dear Jesus, I know I've messed up. I know I'm a sinner. But Lord, I give you my heart tonight. And I ask for your forgiveness. I accept your forgiveness. And now Jesus, be the Lord in my life. And take over. I thank you, Lord, for just now becoming the Lord in my life. It's in your name. Amen. With heads bowed and your eyes still closed, if you prayed that prayer here tonight, can you slip your hand up if you just made that decision? Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. If you made that decision, can you just slip your hand up? I'm looking. I'm scanning over the room. All right, now for those of you that slipped your hand earlier when you said, hey, I'm ready to go deeper in Jesus today. And this year is going to be the difference maker. I want to pray over you right now. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you did in 2017. And I believe, Lord, that this is the year where you're going to take us to the next level. I thank you, God, in advance, God, that you're about to change every student's life here tonight. And this is going to be the year where a difference is going to be made in their life. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing them. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting them be a light and be salt in their schools and their campuses. And Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you're going to take us deeper into your word, deeper into worship, and deeper into community. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe that, shout amen. Stand to your feet. This is what I want you to do. If you believe that 2018 is going to be the greatest year that you've ever had in your life, I want you to put your hands together and make some noise right now. Come on. Come on. I can't hear you. Come on. Take five seconds and give Jesus best praise. One, two, three. Go. Five, four, three. Oh, two, one.